and Shoal De La Fuente. And Dio Horn? Uh, I saw most of the stuff. I had a problem with a little bit of the things going on. Let's talk about your characters and why you like them, first of all. Let's start on this side. Um, yeah, I think uh, the thing that I really enjoy, enjoy playing uh, about, about Michael is, um, is that family means so much to him, and I think that's something that, that we can all identify with regardless of what our relationship is at any given time with anyone in our family. I think we can identify with having a sense of loss, navigating, exploring uh, the impacts and effects of regret, uh, the desire for justice, and wishing that we had the power or the strength of their capacity to, uh, to make something right. And I think that's... Uh, the heart of Michael, that's one of the main pillars and, and things that I enjoy most about playing him and just exploring him in the context of, of the universe that we all occupy. Um, and I think a lot of the things that he feels and, and experiences and, and the choices and the decisions that he makes are things are, are ones of which the audience, if they're honest, would, would make, uh, make themselves. <laughs> uh, I play Dr. Price, and um, personally, like what I really enjoy about playing him is, uh, I, I love that he's so overdeveloped in some ways and so underdeveloped in others that uh, I like getting the opportunity to play somebody who's a lot smarter than I am, uh, but who also lacks any normal social conventions and also lacks the ability to gauge people. Like he might be able to figure out problems that nobody in the world can figure out, but he can't tell if you're happy or sad by looking at you. Um, I appreciate his level of directness um, because I so often am not like that. So it's a lot of fun to be able to play somebody who has a tremendous amount of personal power and directness um, without apology. Um, I play Destiny, and I, I think it's the same thing as with Demore. the family, I love, it, it's not about her, it's not, like I was saying earlier today, well, you guys weren't here, because we were in a different room, but <laughs> uh, you don't really know anything about Destiny, and her, everything for her is about it's about everybody, it's about Peter, mostly. It's all, it's all about him, and every time she does any sort of spells or channels anything, it's all to aid what he's going through. Um, and I, I also, I love playing her because of, because of that, because of all of the different things that they end up throwing at me and throw at, throwing at my character and seeing um, what I can do with it. You know, like, you're gonna dunk your head in a, bathtub hmm. all day. Rock it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun. I love it. Um, but yeah, but I love the the relationship that she has with Peter and also with the, with Andreas who ends up coming into the show. Um, adds a whole other dynamic and she's just so full of love. Everything I think she's guided by love, you know, and I can relate, really, you know, yeah. yeah, it's great, it's not, there's nothing malicious about her, she, it's all about protection, and if she did, if she, I, you know, she would, I'm sure she would kill for Peter, she would do, if she had to ever do something that was, yeah, like, wrong, or whatever, it would be to help him, or to help somebody that she loves, but he is, her, him and his mother are the only people that you know of that are her real blood family. So, um, gentlemen, both your characters in season one were very much based on what we don't know about them. Uh, there were a lot of questions more than there were answers. Uh, did you know the direction that they would take in season two? And if not, how do you play a character who you don't know very much about? Great question. That's a great question. Had no idea um, where they were going to go this season. Uh, largely
Spencer because season one was based so much around the book. Season two was not, so moving past the book. Season one had a different um, writing team than season two. So both of those factors uh, made it sort of like a great mystery. Like it was exciting to come back to playing the character, but there was a large question as to who the character would be and would become. Uh, and um, I think the writers were very interested in figuring out where they'd come from and also taking it into their own direction. Uh, so it was sort of like a great leap of faith for everybody, just kind of coming forward and, uh, and fun to start parsing out those important details, you know, that we had in common, that, you know, the, the writers would seize on something that they liked from the past and would write it, and, and I would see that that was then important to kind of incorporate that in. So it was sort of like um, like a long-distance collaboration, you know, like, like a, we're running a marathon together and we're kind of figuring it out as we go along. Dr. Price has turned out to be, like, a really interesting character this season, and I'm kind of wondering, like, how much of how much of his drive is for his own, um, I guess, his own benefit, and how much of it do you think is like more just loyalty to the company? Um, I, I don't think he has any loyalty to the company, honestly. I, I think that. Um, thank you for that, by the way, too. That was nice of you to oh, say. Thanks. And um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was, it was really good too. So I was like, should I chase after that thought? And I was like, that's ah, gone. <laughs> um, uh, so I think that um, uh, he just, uh, what makes Price interesting? I have no idea. Like I, I, you just asked me, I was like, hmm, what does make Price so interesting? I, I don't really know. Uh, he, uh, um, it's just the simple fact of chasing after what it is that you want. You know, like it's just that, it's that, basic question and what he wants is so big so it's fun to kind of uh, have that much at stake mm -hmm. all the time um, I'm sorry can you repeat this there was a second part of your question I feel like I, I oh like how much of it is just for his own benefit how much is it is like loyalty to the Godfrey's um I, I don't think that he's uh, I don't think he has I think his loyalties are in a different place like mm -hmm. I, I think that people you can you can ask questions about, like, well, does he have loyalty to the people he works for, or to these people? He's, he's operating on a completely different um, uh, game board sort of thing. Like, he, I think he feels like he's doing something for the world, and he has his own moral code. So um, he's, he's actually, I think, not, um, he's not like a good guy or a bad guy in, like, your normal uh, way of thinking about things. Like, he's, he's, he's trying to kind of um, do something for the benefit of how he sees it humankind and whatever he has to do to get there, whether it's seen as evil or bad, he doesn't care as long as he can get it done because the long-term effects will be good. How important is it just to keep your character sexy? How important is that for you? But is at the same time... Of us or just for <laughs> <laughs> well, you, everybody's got a whole different <laughs> fan base of things, so you never know. To keep my character sexy? Yeah. Dio must wake up in the morning, roll out of bed. Accomplished. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean... The reason I ask that because these teens love these female characters. There's just something about them that they like. And at the same time, you know, their victims aren't there the next day kind of thing. So they, they like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask. Um... I never really think about her being sexy. Which is why it's sexy, because I think, I think, uh, for Dio, I think when she, uh, why she's having difficulty answering the question is because that's why uh, she comes across as sexy, because if you think about it, then, then you're not. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't, like, she doesn't really dress provocatively, she, unless she, she's working or whatever, but, yeah, I don't really think of her as sexy, but it's very flattering if people do think that she's sexy. <laughs> um, earlier, Eli was talking about his inspiration and sort of influences of melodrama and David Lynch on the project, and I think that's resulted in a kind of very stylized or kind of different uh, acting style. Um, is preparation different for you as actors, something like this, as opposed to something more naturalistic or realistic? I mean, we ha it's a crazy world that we have to be natural and we have to be natural in, you know, and realistic. 
and I think that's what makes it accessible to other people. It's do you know what I'm do you, do you know what I'm I think saying? there's a, I think, there's a <laughs> I, I think I resonate with what you're saying. Like there's a universality to uh, the circumstances to, to are human crazy. Beings. Sorry. Yeah, 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 no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm just saying the circumstances are crazy and yeah, we're dealing with monsters and and werewolves and, and stuff like that and witches and but it's real for them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, they yeah. have to deal with it realistically. I think that we we trust like you know, Eli and, and Chick and Brian, they, they're all creating a world that is based on melodrama and, and all these other influences. But I think our approach has to be uh, similar, like in our, uh, similar to our other work where we're trying to tell the story truthfully, you know, and in whatever way we can. I think, I don't really think of it all that differently, although I know that the things, the choices that I make in the course of the day are much different than they might be if I was working, like, you know, on a kitchen sink drama or something. Were you guys surprised that there was a season two, and what was what was it like when you first got cast for your roles? Um, you gotta go. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed uh, when I was cast as Michael. I really enjoyed the sense of mystery that that surrounded him. Uh, I really enjoyed just how bad. Just, so uh, <laughs> just the mystery and 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 that sort of that, that badass quality, uh, and I think the unknown. I I actually liked entering into the foray at the end of the season uh, again because I think it ratcheted up that sense of sense of mystery. It's it, it, it sort of a sense of uh, who is this guy and how does he fit in and uh, who's he going to become? What's his impact on? As far as a surprise of season two, uh, no, I think I think for myself I've been I've been doing this long enough where uh, either way is not a is not a surprise uh, <laughs> because there's so many different factors Just gotta involved. Be prepared for what happens. You know the things that you think are going to go and, and must go, and, and humanity depends on it because it's so brilliant and wonderful, uh, and you never see the light of day again. And, and sometimes the opposite happens. So I think uh, I spend less energy now and, and less and less so as, as my career goes on um, trying to figure that out uh, because they ultimately there, so. Well, uh, I, I kind of echo what Tamor says about, I mean, I'm, su I'm surprised uh, the same way I'm surprised always about continuing to get an opportunity to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's that feeling of like, um, oh my gosh, I get to go to work again. Yeah. That's, that's and, and that's why I asked because you never know. Yeah. You never know. You never know and you never know when, you know, the good thing about Netflix is because it's there. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff, but on networks, you just never know. That's true. That, the, you know, the whole pilot model, it's, it's, it can be very frustrating that way that you would spend years and years and years and millions and millions of dollars developing a project that will never even get a, a, a first episode mm -hmm. after the pilot. You know, when, and you've put all that stuff into it and you've, you know, you've made your Bible that's, you know, three seasons long and you've, you've done all that stuff and, and it never makes it out. Netflix is really committed to, you know, uh, they want to see the story that you're going to tell, you know, and then they and then they want to see more. They'll ask a lot of questions about it, but they give they give the artists a chance to kind of create their work, which, you know, it's very exciting. It's very exciting to be part of that. I was <laughs> same thing. I got a job, you know, <laughs> but um, and then I was like, I'm a gypsy and I'm a witch. This is awesome, you know. So it was really exciting. I I was totally freaking stoked to get hired on this show. Um, it, it's just such a cool take on the whole monster world. And um, however I could contribute to that, you know, I'm, I was totally flattered to, to be cast. Hmm. Flattered is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was it's like, really, me? Yeah. Okay, thanks, yeah. you liked what I did? Cool. So despite all of the supernatural aspects of the show, there's a lot of like really um, sort of realistic elements of Hemlock Grove as well, um, including sort of the class struggle between the um, 
characters, especially when Linda gets arrested mm -hmm. and they can't come up with the money to get her out at first. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how you see your characters kind of fitting into the whole um, class structure of the show. Um, I mean, I think I don't really come from high class. <laughs> you know, it was sort of easy for me to like. Okay, we got. I need to make some money to get from A to B. So what do we got to do to make that happen? You know, I mean, that's the background that I come from. My mom isn't rich. She works for she worked for everything that she had. But it was like if I wanted to go on a tournament with water polo, she found the money to get me to get me there, you know? And I think that destiny fits in into that sort of thing. Like she she's gonna do what she's gotta do and she's gonna get that money and I think the class I think it's yeah, I think it's pretty interesting that you bring that up. Like I it's a great question. realize it's a great that question. yeah it's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess if you could if you could map it out, it would be like you know you have uh, you know the gypsies on one side of town, and as you move along and you get to the White Tower, you get to the you know where all the new money is pouring. The privilege. There's like so much you know the Godfrey name is there, and all the you know billions of dollars in research and you know with the company and everything. So, I mean, if you represent you know that mm -hmm. end, I think I represent the other end, which is I'm so removed from that. In fact, you. I'm trying to think if it's well, season the struggle, two. you know. Like I find the in the lower class, it's like it's a constant struggle every single day. It's like, am I gonna have? Am I gonna eat tomorrow? Well, yeah, yeah. And those struggles, like your struggles of eating, like th those are, like Price's struggles are not mm -hmm. those struggles. Like in fact, I'm trying to think if you ever see Price outside mm -hmm. in season two, <laughs> you may not. Actually, I'm actually thinking about it, and you never, s you know, you may never see him outside. I think this is literally is Ivory Tower. Mm -hmm. I think for the lower classes, it's about survival. It's just about like basic, sur like yeah, I basic think it's, everyone survival. has survival issues. But you're right. Like, like where am I going to eat? Mm -hmm. Like for me, it's like um, or they're driving us out of town. You know, mm -hmm. with, the, with Peter and the werewolf and everything. Yeah, it's interesting with class too because, it, in some ways, I think it probably depends for the different characters. It depends on what it is they want and what they need to in order to achieve it. Um, because I think. Is a great question. My head's kind of been mulling that with, with regards to Michael. And um, while from a class or societal standpoint, you could say he is here versus here versus the Godfrey's versus Price versus Destiny, uh, there's a way in which uh, what he wants to achieve, I believe, in a lot of ways stands outside of the class because uh, it's, it has to do more with his. Uh, intellectual acumen, it, it, it has to do more with his background and experience and expertise as it relates to what he's trying to achieve, uh, and less about, less about money, you know, uh, not that class is really about money. It's uh, a great question. Yeah, my head's working on that one. Mm -hmm. um, when you look across the rest of the TV landscape, what do you see and say, man, I'd love to work on that, or man, that's really impressive? I would like to be on Orange is New Black. Just putting it out there. <laughs> but as a woman, and just the characters and the writing, and it's great to see a show that's just so mm -hmm. full of strong, talented, beautiful, amazing women. I don't know, for me, as a, as a woman watching that. I love seeing strong women too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just strong women. Yeah. yeah. Uh, along those lines, Titana Maslany and as mm -hmm. in, in, black, in an orphan black. Mm -hmm. Anything with the word black in it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> What's coming up next for you guys since everything's done now? Um, I'm going to be on a mini, mini series in Canada and also a web series for the comedy. I'm going to be playing the lead. It's called um, Blank Page. I'm going to be playing Page, who's an artist. Just going through trials and tribulations of love and, and friendship and stuff in the city of Montreal, Canada. <laughs> I'm going to be joining a series for the time, uh, for, for a period of time uh, on Team Nickelodeon and I'll be playing a head of, uh, head of emergency and, and love interest. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a couple of movies uh, that are 
are supposed to be coming out, one called uh, Julia, which is a, um, an intense horror film, um, and another called Ava's Possessions, which is an interesting film that it picks up after um, the possession is over. So the, Ava wakes up and, and she's been, she had been possessed, and so she's dealing with the ramifications of what happened after that, which I thought was a really interesting take uh, on that story. Uh, and then right now I'm, I'm touring um, this one-person play that I've been doing for the last uh, two years called Hold These Truths. Where's that at? It's going to Seattle this time. Um, uh, it's based uh, on the life of this man named Gordon Hirabayashi, who was a Japanese-American Quaker during World War II who refused the internment. And his case went all the way to the Supreme Court, and he lost. And then 35 years later, they found all this documentation that allowed them to reopen the case, and, and then the, it was overturned. It's a, it's a great, great story about a really interesting man. It's a very good story. I know about that. Very interesting. Yeah, it's called Hold These Truths to Play, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to... It would be great to bring it to Los Angeles, but we're kind of, it kind of depends on what my schedule is at the time, too. But um, it's a beautiful play. Thanks. What do you hope the audience gets out of seeing season two? Gosh, I, I just hope they're really entertained. I hope I hope we surprise them. Um, I hope we're able to push the boundaries on them a little bit, um, give them a, a little of what they expect and a lot of what they don't. Um, and um, but more than anything, we just I want them to be entertained. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.